Well, good morning. And welcome to another gray overcast morning here in Cambridge. Hopefully we might see the sun today, but you can never rely upon it in the UK in January. So a lot of you reached out and asked, how do we get started? We've been doing this now for coming on 15 years and we have solar, we have batteries, we have a heat pump, we have electric vehicles, but we didn't do it all at once. So let's head back into the office and I'll tell you how we did it and I'll also give you my recommendations what to do if you're starting out today. So one of the questions I frequently get asked is, how do I get started? It seems overwhelming when you start costing out solar and batteries, maybe an EV and a heat pump, and you suddenly realize you could be looking at 50,000 pounds or more to install everything that you would like. But maybe there's a different way to do this. Let me start by dispelling a few rumors and untruths. One of the comments that I get a lot in a lot of my videos is, well, you're rich, it's all right for people like you. I'm, I'm not rich. I am a normal family man, I work a job like everybody else, and what I've actually done is invested my money and my time into things that will pay off in the long run for me. So you don't have to be rich to have solar. And I think really what you've got to look at is people that have solar are generally people who have looked at what they can afford and decided to make an investment. Now, one of the other things that comes up in the comments is, it's okay for you, you own your own house, we rent. And renting does bring its own challenges. You can't just start strapping panels onto the roof or changing the electrical system in a rental property. But there are systems out there for people that rent. There are systems that are called balcony solar systems, and we'll talk a little bit about those later. But they are solutions, they're on a smaller scale, but they would allow you to get started in a rental property. And the great thing about them is when you decide to move on, maybe you move into your own home or you move into another rental property, you can take them with you. Another thing that we should dispel here is that solar will never pay for itself. You'll invest all this money and you'll never get your money back. The average solar system pays for itself in about six to eight years, depending on the size and complexity of the system you install, whether you install batteries or not, all of this will have an impact on your return on investment period. But on average, it seems to be about six to eight years for any system. Now, when you look at solar panels themselves, they generally come with about a 25 year warranty. Um, the installers will warranty their work probably for at least a decade. And what it means is you will have a system that you will pay for, it will pay itself back in six to eight years, then it will just continue to generate money for you. There is no great green conspiracy that the government is forcing people to have all this green tech because somehow it benefits the government. This is money in your pocket. This is one of the only things you can really do in your house that will make you money without you having to lift a finger. Before we dive into this, ask yourself a couple of questions. What is it that you're trying to achieve? Never mind anybody else, never mind other people's opinions. What do you want to get from this and why are you doing it? Is it to save money? I would say for the vast majority of people, that's the reason they do it. Is it because you want to be more self-sufficient? You don't want to be reliant upon the grid for your power? Or are you trying to save the planet? For me personally, it's kind of all three. I would say it's more on the saving money side. It's quite a bit on the self-sufficiency and it's a little bit on the saving the planet. Now, before you get started, it's important to understand what's your budget, because things can spiral pretty quickly. When you start looking at different systems and you go, oh, I'd really like that and I'd really like that. And before you know it, you've doubled what you plan to spend. So set yourself a budget, set yourself a budget and don't exceed it. Ask yourself, how are you going to fund it? Are you going to pay for it yourself? Are you going to take out a loan? But you've got to model that loan. It's all very well making savings from solar, but if you're paying it all to the bank, then your system is never gonna pay for itself. Take a look at if there are any incentives or schemes out there that you can leverage. Now, quite often the government runs certain schemes in the early days of solar, 
we were able to take advantage of something called the feed-in tariff. The feed-in tariff meant that we got paid for what we generated. So it helped with those early systems that were very expensive. Like I said, a two kilowatt system back in 2010 cost me 15,000 pounds. To be able to offset some of that, the government gave us an incentive plan to help pay for it. And it did pay for itself. Don't get me wrong. It was a very, very good incentive plan. Today, the incentive plans are focused on things like boiler upgrades. So you can get an incentive to get a heat pump. But it's, it's worth looking at not only the incentives that are available maybe from government or from your regional councils, um, but also look at what the banks are offering. As I say, Barclays, I don't know if they still have this, but they did have a scheme where you could get a 0% loan to invest in green technologies. Now, let's be clear, there is no simple answer. There is no, I'm not going to give you that, do this. Everybody is different. Everybody's means to be able to do this are different. Everybody's needs from what they're going to install are going to be different. So keep that in the back of your mind. There is no one size fits all. So let's start with solar on its own. We're not going to, we'll look at batteries in a minute. Let's start with just solar. A simple rule of thumb, cover as much roof space as you can afford. I know people say, but it'll make my roof look ugly. Simple answer, don't look up. But the more space you've got, the more power you can generate, the more return you're gonna get from your solar panels. It is that simple. Obviously, if you can only afford a small number of panels, put them on the most south facing roof that you have. That is where you will generate the most power. Then look at your east and west facing aspects. And finally, don't ignore the north facing aspects. If you have a look up at the top of the screen there, um, you'll see there's a, a, a link to a video that I did a few weeks ago on north facing panels and are they really worth it? And I get a significant portion of my generation in the summer from my north facing panels. They start generating at about four o'clock in the morning when the sun comes up. And it means that during those summer months, we get a really long extended generating day. Now, there are systems out there designed for people in rented properties. One that I'm quite familiar with is from a company called EcoFlow. EcoFlow makes something they call a balcony solar system, but it doesn't have to be installed on a balcony. These are panels that can be installed wherever you can put them, where they're not permanently fixed to the building. I have four panels hanging on my fences in my garden. These connect into a micro inverter that plugs straight into the power supply. Uh, this really should be installed by a qualified electrician. So you need to put this into a fused spur, but it's a really simple, really cheap install. You can build a whole system for about 500 pounds. Now you can obviously expand upon that. You can add batteries to it later on if you want to, but a few panels connected to a small micro inverter means that you can start generating for a very small outlay. And the great thing about this is if you do move out of your rented property, you can just pack it all up and take it all with you. Now, if you're going to put solar in without batteries, you've got to get yourself on an export tariff. This doesn't cost anything. You just apply to your provider for an export tariff. They will set it up on your smart meter. And then any power that you don't use that flows back into the grid, you will get paid for. Now, if you don't have any way to store that power, it's really important that the spare power you get paid back for because it will help with the payoff of your panels. Now, if you don't have battery storage, a solar system in the UK is really only going to produce meaningful amounts of energy for about eight to nine months of the year. As we get to the part of the year where the clocks start to go back, you're going to notice a huge dip in your generation. Now, on a nice sunny day in December, you might get a few kilowatt hours uh, of energy produced. But realistically, you've got to understand that December, January, you're going to have almost zero generation. What if you can't put panels on your roof? Maybe you just don't have the space. Maybe your roof can't take the weight of the panels. There are all sorts of reasons why you can't do solar. Let's talk about standalone battery storage. Now, there are two types of battery storage. There's what I would call a permanent install. This is something that you would mount in your house. You'd wire it into the uh, electrical grid and it's not designed to be moved at all. And then there are the portable power stations from companies like EcoFlow or Anchor. Um, there are dozens of them out there. Jackery is another one. These are small units, 
uh, generally anything up to about 50 kilograms in weight um, that have an inverter built into them. You can charge them from the grid and then you can plug devices into them to power your house. So again, you might have um, one in your office, maybe your, your home office where you work from, you could power your computer from them. The more modern ones even have a built-in UPS. So if the power goes down, your computers will continue to run off of that. But these are generally in the sort of one to two thousand pound range, depending on the, the capacity of them. Um, they do go up to sort of three to four kilowatts per unit, and you can add on extra batteries as and when you can afford them. So a permanent system will be wired into your house electric system, into your fuse boards, and it means that any device in the house that's drawing power will be able to draw power from these batteries. There are two types of batteries. There are DC coupled batteries, generally known as a hybrid system, and there are AC coupled batteries. Now the difference between the two is AC coupled batteries, they generally have an inverter built into them, but they wire directly into your power. DC coupled batteries sit behind a separate inverter. And this means that the power from your solar panels can go directly into the battery without having to be converted into AC, then back into DC to get into the battery. So if it is a permanent system that you're putting up, a hybrid system can be more efficient. Now with standalone batteries, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got a low cost overnight tariff to import energy because you're gonna be buying energy when it's cheaper, storing it in your batteries, using it during the day so that you don't have to use expensive electricity or possibly exporting it back to the grid later in the day. When you're looking at your import tariff, also look at an export tariff at the same time. So one of the things that we do with our batteries is we buy in power at nighttime, we fill the batteries up completely during the winter, we then run the house all day, we drain the batteries down, and anything that is left in the batteries at the end of the day, we export back to the grid. And therefore we pay uh, a small amount of money for the power and we actually get paid more for exporting it back. So there is a delta between the two. Now, anyone that's looking to install standalone batteries, I would say start small. Understand your energy needs. Your energy needs might change over the years but look for a modular battery solution, something that lets you add on battery modules without having to redesign the whole system or get a new inverter or something like that. There are plenty of companies out there that do this. Uh, one of the most common that I'm seeing lately is a company called ESS. The Alpha ESS system is a modular battery system where you can just add more bricks of batteries as you go along. So you need a bit more capacity, add another brick to the system. Now, one thing to point out, Battery storage alone isn't gonna pay for itself very quickly because the way that you make money with a battery system or the way that you save money with a battery system is the difference between the price that you import and the price that you export. Now with the current energy markets, this can't be guaranteed. So you might find that the prices you're getting today aren't the prices you're getting tomorrow. So they will reduce your outgoings because obviously you won't be paying full price for electricity all day long but just keep in the back of your mind that these tariffs do change over time. Okay, let's talk about heat pumps for a minute. Heat pumps without solar and batteries are no cheaper to run than running it on gas. So if all you're looking for is a cost saving, then I wouldn't get a heat pump straight away. Now, obviously, if you're worried about your emissions, uh, heat pumps have significantly lower emissions, especially if you're running on a green electricity tariff but the cost savings are gonna come if coupled with a battery and solar solution. So I really wouldn't recommend getting a heat pump unless you've got solar and batteries already. They will be much more impactful on your bottom line than getting a heat pump. But once you've got solar and batteries, a heat pump starts to make more and more sense. Okay, let's talk about electric vehicles for a minute because although not generally part of your, your house electrical system, um, other than that they draw power from the house to charge themselves up, they will be your largest monthly saving by far because electric vehicles cost anywhere between one and two pence a mile to drive. Now you compare that to even the most efficient petrol and diesel cars, they can be costing 10 to 20 pence a mile to drive. EVs have much lower servicing costs. Um, you don't have all the fluids, the oils, and everything that need to be changed. The, you don't use the brakes as much because of regenerative braking. So therefore your monthly savings are gonna be quite significant compared to a petrol and diesel car. 
but they're also quite a significant outlay. They are more expensive, especially if you're buying new. Um, an electric vehicle will cost you more than a similar sized petrol or diesel car. Again, those savings from having an EV really start to multiply when you couple them with solar and batteries. With solar and batteries, what you can do is have your EV plugged in at home, and then during the summer, when there's excess solar, you can charge your car. So therefore, you're not needing to import energy from the grid. Now, if you add batteries to the equation, it becomes a little bit more complicated because is it beneficial then to use that excess solar to charge the car, or is it more financially beneficial to export that power at maybe 15 pence a kilowatt and then buy it back at night at eight and a half pence a kilowatt. That's a decision you'll have to make yourselves. Now, another advantage of having an electric vehicle is it gives you access to the cheapest tariffs, certainly from companies like Octopus, from Eon, from Tomato Energy, EDF. They all have EV specific tariffs that mean that during the period at night, you can import power uh, significantly cheaper than you can during the day. And then if you couple that with battery storage, you can get even bigger savings because not only do you get the cheap rate for charging your car, you get a cheaper rate for all the energy you use at night so you can fill up those house batteries at the same time. So what would I do if I was doing this all over again? Well, firstly, I don't really like taking out loans. I don't like owing money to people. So I would save money just as we did back in 2010. Um, we actually had a couple of years where we didn't have nice foreign holidays. We took that money and we bought a solar system with it. I would buy a small solar system, maybe around about four kilowatts is a good starting point um, with a small battery, maybe four to eight kilowatts of battery storage. That system alone over the next six to eight years will pay for itself. And then you can look at investing the profits from that in expanding the storage. You can add more batteries, you can add more panels at that point, and you can grow your system over time. Once you've got a system that's paid for itself, it becomes a much better proposition to look at investing in things like a heat pump or maybe an electric vehicle. The challenge here is there are so many options. There are so many different ways that you can do this. And the real advice that I can give you from this is choose components that you can build upon. Don't engineer yourself into a corner with a solution. Now, I've done this in the past. The initial system that we put in, we had two separate inverters. We had a two kilowatt inverter and a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, and neither of them were really fit for purpose. So we ended up having to rip all of those out and we've replaced them with a single 10 kilowatt inverter. If you're gonna be installing an inverter today that you want to last for 20 odd years, look to install the biggest inverter that you can. So just remember, this is just my opinions. Take them as that, they are an opinion. Everybody has one, everybody loves to share their opinions. But these are my opinions. This is what I would do if I was starting out again. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this useful. It is a very expensive proposition if you're thinking about trying to do all of this at once. But start simple, keep adding to your system, and in a few years' time, you'll be well on your way. With that, we're going to sign off because we're off for a walk. I'll see you all next time for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.